Now my name is Matt Foley, and I am a motivational Santa. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 SNL sketches we can't believe nobody broke character in. Where did you get that pickle jar? I, I wanted a pickle. For this list, we're looking at sketches the SNL cast got through with straight faces despite their over-the-top, bizarre, or unpredictable content. Which SNL sketch would have had you breaking? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. Final Encounter Cold Open Close Encounter is among the most memorable modern SNL sketches. Not just because of the outrageous dialogue or Kate McKinnon's performance as Ms. Rafferty, but due to Ryan Gosling's uncontainable laughter. Oh, I was carried down <laughs> gently. <laughs> He's crying. McKinnon broke Gosling again a few years later when he returned for another close encounter. Gosling isn't the only one guilty of breaking, as Liev Schreiber struggled to conceal his smile in Paranormal Occurrence. When McKinnon's last episode as a series regular opened with a final encounter, many anticipated somebody to lose it. Even as Rafferty gets too close for comfort, guest host Natasha Leone stays in character. And that one of these little bastards runs up, and I'm sorry, Carla, I gotta use you here. Plucks one, yeah, plucks one right out. Resident breaker A.D. Bryant also keeps it together, while McKinnon and Cecily Strong remain committed as always. How are you returned to Earth? So there was another soft light that washed over me and I was instantly just back to where I was before. If Gosling had returned though, it might have been another story. Number 9. Super Bassomatic 76 Save Lorraine Newman as the bass drinker, Dan Aykroyd single-handedly carries this classic sketch as a fast-talking spokesman. You could scale the bass, remove the bass's tail, head and bones, and serve the fish as you would any other fish dinner. But why bother now that you can use Robco's amazing new kitchen tool, the Super Bassomatic 76? On the one hand, having fewer cast members in a sketch lessens the odds of somebody breaking. However, placing the weight of a sketch on one person's shoulders can backfire as well. Here's how it works. Catch a bass, remove the hook, and drop the bass. That's the whole bass into the Super Bassomatic 76. In Aykroyd's case, he not only has to speak a mile a minute, but he also has to operate a blender with a bass inside. At one point, the blender of fish guts almost tips over, which could have stalled Aykroyd. Yet Aykroyd remains in complete control of the sketch, never stumbling over his lines. Yes, it's just that simple. <laughs> While Newman has significantly fewer lines, she also deserves credit for staying in character as she sips that terrific bass. Did she really drink that? Wow, that's terrific bass! Number 8. Motivational Santa Chris Farley was notorious for cracking up the cast as Matt Foley, the most notable example being his debut, which had David Spade and Christina Applegate desperately trying to hide their smiles. Breaking became routine for Foley sketches, but one of the smoothest iterations involved children, strangely enough. First off, I am 35 years old, I am thrice divorced, and I live at the North Pole in a van down by the river! With Foley donning a red suit, Santa emerges from his sleigh down by the river to motivate the kiddies. It's all about presents to you kids, isn't it? You all want to wake up Christmas morning, run down to the tree at light speed. You'd think that kids would be more susceptible to break, especially compared to professional comedic performers. Surprisingly, the kids all maintain horrified looks throughout. One possible exception involves Sally Field's child, who's either covering his face due to tears or laughter. Either way, he stays in character. Mom, I wish you could be Santa's little helper and shut your damn cake hole! <laughs> While the cast doesn't visibly break, Foley naturally breaks the set. Number 7. Sarah Palin interviews with Katie Couric The palin Couric interviews were instantly iconic. But the SNL parody was arguably an even more substantial zeitgeist moment. Governor Palin, thank you for agreeing to talk with me one more time. Oh, hey, you know, sure. <laughs> Tina Fey returns as Sarah Palin while Amy Poehler goes from channeling Hillary Clinton to portraying Katie Couric. Fey compared Palin's actual interview to somebody getting, quote, lost in a corn maze, which she brilliantly conveys here. 
Although Faye wears an increasingly adorable grin throughout, she recites each head-scratching line without ever breaking character. Well, Alaska and Russia are only separated by a narrow maritime border. You've got Alaska here, and this right here is water, and then that's up there's Russia. <laughs> so we keep an eye on them. <laughs> Polar is given an equally challenging task as Couric, having to preserve a dead serious face throughout. A less seasoned comedian would be giggling with every response. While a smile almost creeps up on Polar's face, she continually contains any eternal laughter with mystified looks, incessant blinking, and awkward silence. You don't have any lifelines. Yeah. Well, in that case, I'm just gonna have to get back to ya! <laughs> Number six. Colonel Angus Comes Home Colonel Angus is a sketch you probably didn't entirely understand as a kid. Now that you know what Colonel Angus means, it's hard not to snicker every time somebody says it. Daddy, they say all the women folk love Colonel Angus. Mm. I don't know why people make such a big fuss over Colonel Angus. The SNL cast deserves a Medal of Honor for getting through the sketch unscathed, all while doing southern accents right out of Gone with the Wind. Whereas some sketches require the cast to go big, the success of this one depends on how understated they can be. I fear my visit is an inconvenience. <laughs> Nonsense, Colonel Angus. We're always happy to see your shining face. The cast acts as if there's nothing silly or dirty about Colonel Angus, although anyone who reads between the lines can tell otherwise. Casting Christopher Walken as the Colonel was beyond inspired, as few do deadpan better than him any other actor might have cracked a naughty grin. If you'll excuse me, I'd like to freshen up. Number 5. Black Angel Mary Catherine Molly Shannon got more than a few cuts and bruises as Mary Catherine Gallagher, literally throwing herself into the role. Ha. Why would we put a dork like you in our vicious gang? <laughs> because ever since I saw the Patty Hearst story on TNT, I knew I wanted to be a bad girl. <laughs> With most of these sketches ending in a pratfall, we often find ourselves asking, oh gee, is she okay? Thankfully, Shannon always bounced back. Mary Catherine took one of her most violent tumbles in this sketch amid a berserk monologue. You think you're tough, huh? You think, you think, you think that I'm afraid of you, little Amy Fisher? Is that what you think, huh? Huh? Going full Amy Fisher on a stall, she turns the ladies' room into her own personal wrestling ring. I'll kill ya! I'll kill ya! I'll kill ya! We're not sure what's more impressive, Shannon's unwavering resilience in the face of such brutal physical comedy, or the fact that the rest of the cast doesn't break. We wouldn't be surprised if the trio portraying the Black Angels were genuinely intimidated by Shannon at this moment. Young lady, you are in a lot of trouble. Oh, yeah? Black Angel! <laughs> Number 4. Chippendales Auditions Chris Farley strikes again in the sketch that propelled him to SNL superstardom. It takes an enormous amount of confidence to be a Chippendales dancer, especially when the audition is televised. Marcy, music. While Farley and Patrick Swayze possess very different physiques, both are equally committed to staying in character as two men dancing their hearts out. While some wondered if Farley would go through with the potentially embarrassing sketch, he remained a team player to the end. You were great out there, man. I know. It's gonna be you. For Kevin Nealon, who played a judge, this was one of the hardest sketches to endure without laughing. Barney, we all agreed that your dancing was great, your presentation was very sexy. Uh, I guess, I guess in the end, we all thought that Adrian's body was just much, much better than yours. <laughs> he distracted himself by focusing on Farley's stretch marks, rearranging them into words in his mind. Jan Hooks supposedly restrained her laughter by looking at Nealon, having previously dated him. Number 3. Samurai Stockbroker John Belushi's Samurai stands out as one of the most unhinged characters ever to grace SNL. Mikaraki, Mr. Mikaraki, listen, uh, I, uh, I'm gonna get right to the point, I am very, very unhappy. Matching the energy Belushi brought to the role was nearly impossible, but playing the straight man wasn't much easier. In this sketch, Buck Henry matter-of-factly delivers his lines as if he's talking to an everyday stockbroker rather than one who also happens to be a samurai. You said that this stock would split three for one. For one, right? Well, I suppose that's 
That's a little bit better, but that's not exactly what I'm talking about. While Henry's composed demeanor is commendable, his dedication to the role shines through the most as the sketch wraps. Creating a window with his katana, Belushi accidentally strikes Henry on the noggin. The injury briefly throws Henry off balance, but not off course. Once the window is finished, Henry completes the bit by throwing himself out. When doing live television, always carry band-aids. Oh, 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 yeah. ah. Number 2. Celebrity Jeopardy – Kathy Lee, Tom Hanks, Sean Connery, Burt Reynolds Virtually any installment of Celebrity Jeopardy could have made this list thanks to two players, Will Ferrell and Daryl Hammond, neither of whom ever broke as Alex Trebek and Sean Connery respectively. We imagine it was especially difficult for Farrell, having to preserve Trebek's stone-faced professionalism even as Connery bombards him with savage insults. My mother is infirm. She uses a walker. She is a walker. A street walker. <laughs> this particular sketch stands out thanks to a few surprises, including Norm Macdonald as Burt Reynolds and Tom Hanks as Tom Hanks. The Oscar winner couldn't be more convincing as an oblivious version of himself, never cluing us in that he's in on the joke. This is the only state ending in Hampshire. South Hampshire. <laughs> Hanks returned as a Trump supporter for a round of Black Jeopardy, once again devoting himself to a role without winking or laughing at the camera. Skinny women can do this for you. Doug, what is not a damn thing? Yeah, you know what? Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. NPR's Delicious Dish – Shweddy Balls As Margaret Jo McCullen and Terry Rialto, Anna Gasteyer and Molly Shannon captured the soft-spoken spirit of the hosts you often hear on public radio. Now, what's on your list this holiday season, Margaret Jo? Well, Terry, I really got greedy this year. I'm asking Kris Kringle for a wooden bowl, some oversized index cards, and a funnel. Ooh. Maintaining that low-key manner of speaking sounds simple enough, but when you're given a line as hilarious as sweaty balls, holding back your laughter becomes something of an exercise in tolerance. Hi, thanks for having me. Oh. Now, did I pronounce your name uh, correctly? You, you sure did. Pete Schwetty. <laughs> Gasteyer and Shannon are joined by Alec Baldwin as Pete Schwetty, whose name provides a delectable double entendre. Chowing down on the Schwetty balls, the three are never anything less than civil, with the X-rated nature of the name being completely lost on them. No one can resist my Schwetty balls. <laughs> Saying Schwetty balls once with a straight face is challenging enough. Doing it several times has got to be a Christmas miracle. I guess that's all the time we have today, Terry. <laughs> so join us next week when our topic will be that other holiday favorite, Fragrant, fragrant Salty Nuts. <laughs> Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.